3D printing is awesome, but it has a major flaw. Everything we print is, well, plastic. Some of it is soft, some of it is strong, some of it even dissolves in water, but none of it is metal. Until today. Today, we are going to model, print, sand, and assemble a perfect replica of Obi-Wan's lightsaber with three different types of metal. Now, when I said I wanted a perfect replica of Obi-Wan's lightsaber, I wasn't messing around. We need to copy the dimensions of every single component as exactly as possible. And to do that, we have photos, handily taken from the website where the actual hero prop was auctioned off for $106,000. I mean, if, if that's what people pay, I mean, I, I don't make the rules. I, this is this is what you want. You you ask for it. Anyway, since I found out the saber is exactly 11 inches long, we can base all of our other measurements on the ratio of that measurement to the length of the saber. Now, you might be thinking, well, that was a short video. Pretty easy stuff, right? Wrong. Thankfully, I decided to do some test prints while I waited for this special filament to arrive, because when I printed out the pieces, they had a few problems. If we print the emitter, face down, the bottom looks very sharp, but the top is a jumbled mess. And if we print the emitter face up, the top looks good, but the bottom is now sad and stringy. So we need to cut out the key top section so we can print out the bottom section face down and this top section face up. Then we can combine these two for a nice neat emitter. For the copper piece, the bottom of the cut is a nice neat line, but the top cut is kind of rounded off because the filament doesn't have anything to support it while it's printed. To solve this, we just have to cut the copper piece in half and make one side long enough to slide into this other with a bit of a gap, and then we can print both sides of the cut without either side drooping. The brass piece turned out fine, but since we're using metal filament, we need to sand and polish every single surface, and that's going to be pretty hard to do with this little slot. So I made this part a ring that can slide on and off a narrow center, allowing us to fully sand the bottom of the ring and the angled part before we assemble them. The grip was thankfully fine, as were the other three sections except for this little round cylinder. This is a CoverTech wheel. It fits into a little clip you can wear on your belt and holds up the saber. Except that I printed this in one piece, so the top drooped down a lot, which could easily be solved by again cutting a circle out of the base to make it a ring and making sure the top part was long enough to slide all the way inside while keeping the right gap. Then we can print both pieces with the larger side on the build plate and they'll come out perfect. At this point, it was time to start printing the actual objects, and the first thing we needed was some special filament infused with metal particles, which I picked up from a store called Protopasta. I selected their stainless steel for the main metal color, and copper and brass for the accents. Now, the metal filament is pretty expensive. You can see the black filament for the plastic parts of the hilt was $20 for one kilogram, and the metal filaments are $50 for 500 grams. So they're about five times as expensive. So I only got 500 grams of stainless steel and 100 grams each of copper and brass, which should be enough for several hilts. The other thing you have to do is swap out your 3D printer's nozzle. And there's two reasons for this. One of them is the size of the nozzle. If you have a smaller nozzle, like a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, which is what many printers come with, you actually need to upgrade to a 0.6 millimeter nozzle to get less nozzle clogs because of the metal infused filament. Also, if you have a brass nozzle, it's going to wear out pretty quickly with all the metal particles being shoved through it because brass is a softer metal. So you want to try to get a stainless steel nozzle if you can. I picked up these two 0.6mm stainless steel nozzles for about $15, so hopefully they'll last for a while. And while I print out all the pieces for the Saber, you can hear about our sponsor. Have you ever wanted to get something manufactured? No? Wrong. You want to get something manufactured. So, now that you want to manufacture something, where do you go? Well, the sponsor of this video just so happens to be a manufacturing company called PCBWay. And they do offer the ability to manufacture PCBs, create 3D prints, even CNC mill pieces of metal. That's real metal, like the shiny stuff. And they do offer orders as small as five pieces, which is perfect for a hobbyist like us. The link, which is PCBWay, PCBWay.com is, is right there, so if you want to manufacture something, which we, we know you do, just click the link. Now, after printing the parts for the lightsaber, you can see they don't really look like much, because we have a lot 
of sanding and polishing to do. I started with 220 grit just to get the layer lines off and then moved on to 320 grit. It's a little bit less obvious what you're going for here since the layer lines should already be gone. So I recommend sanding one spot for about five to 10 seconds to get the right texture and then sanding everywhere else to match that texture. And after that, it's time to polish our piece, which I did with 2000 grit sandpaper. And for some of the pieces, I hit it with some 5000 and 7000 too, but it's pretty easy to tell what you're going for here. You can basically just keep going with the 2000 grit until your piece looks like metal and then you can stop. And once we've done that to all of the pieces, obviously not the plastic ones, we can finally assemble the saber. I started with the emitter and I already snapped the top into the main body of it. It was tight enough I didn't need any glue so we can move on to the copper neck. We can add glue to the copper, this is the longer side of the copper, and slide it into the emitter. Add some glue to the top of this inside piece or the bottom of the outside piece and then slide them together. The brass piece is exactly the same, just fit the ring onto the smaller piece. Just, just fit it on, yep, yep, just like this. <laughs> I was just getting set up that time, no worries, it's just, just like this. So basically you just take the ring and you set the small piece on top of it just just like this you just want to you just want to slide it in you know just like this Yeah, so the tolerance is way too tight doing these pieces, so not only is all of the filament wasted, but we're gonna have to reprint it, which will take about two hours. Or I could use the super glue to glue the brass piece back together, almost invisibly, sand out the inside of the ring until it can actually fit, modify the 3D model for future builds, like the ones I'm selling on my Etsy store, and glue that brass piece onto the copper one. Follow that up with the grip section, and for the activator section, carefully add glue to the copper pin, holding it in place so it doesn't slide all the way through, which it very easily can. Glue in the screw, slide in the black spacer thingy, and force the brass activator plate on from the top, then adjust it so it's sent. But that doesn't stop me because I actually printed out multiple of those while I was testing something earlier, so we can carefully add our new brass plate, add some glue to the activator, and glue it on to the grip. Then we can force the cover tech wheel parts together until they're flush, glue them onto the booster section, glue that into the activator, glue the plumb on the bottom, and. And if you want to construct one of these sabers from a kit or you want me to construct one for you, you got my Etsy store right there or you can check out this video where I show you how to make a lightsaber that glows. Okay, that's all.